Laurie, I can help you. Hi, um, there's a house across the road that seems to be on fire. No, there's anyone home there? Um, yeah, there is. There's a man screaming, call the fire brigade, call the fire brigade. It's all smoke coming out of the, um, the roof. Station 27's racing to a house fire. Jump that island. Got it, boy. You can see it there in the distance. Right, and then left. All the fireys know right now is that a house is ablaze and that there's a good chance someone's still inside. The moment 27 station spots smoke, they know there's another crew on the scene drenching the house with water. Garth straight up the ladder, ventilating the cottage. John just wants us to take us on the roof, I think you're going to get from the outside as well. This used to be a bathroom. This was the kitchen. The home is knee deep in the treasures of a lifetime. All those mementos are fueling the fire, so every last ember has to be put out. When the fire was at its peak, it would have been extremely hot, extremely difficult to breathe. It would have been a lot of smoke, a lot of superheated gases which enter the lungs. It doesn't take very long for you to uh, become unconscious. And that's what happened to Barry. He got caught in the fire and is finding it hard to breathe. You all right? Are you feeling crook? Are you feeling crook? You're feeling okay. Relax, relax. Uh, relax. Okay. Bullets treating him with oxygen and trying to keep him calm. Has he got any like medical condition, you know, asthma or anything like that? He's got asthma. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He might be hey, a little bit handicapped. Got asthma. I'll find out if he's got a puff or somewhere. He might be a little bit handicapped too. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To make matters worse, Barry's panicking about what's happened to his pets. They're all missing. How about see? <coughs> Relax. Station 15's on round the clock watch. Hey, Joel, any news, buddy? No, nah, still nothing. We'll walk over your bar away. Close. Joel's about to be a dad for the second time. He's ready to spring into action at any moment. Being number two, the baby will probably arrive under lights and siren. Didn't think we'd see you today. I didn't think I was going to be in. It's uh, it's, it's so close now. She's uh, she's getting all those practice and hicks and whatnot, yep. heaps of contractions. So I kind of wasn't coming in, and then they sort of subsided. So you got uh, the here phone, I am. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, just waiting for that call, mate. And I'm out of here. Sorry, sorry. I got a lift rescue for you. So residential apartment complex there. They got a male, one male trapped there. Walker Street's this next one, so it's probably that big building just there. While Joel nervously waits for the phone to ring, Matt and Sully are assigned to the rescue Walker, truck. Sydney Car and Rescue 15 Blue, we have code 3 to Walker Street. Um, we've got a guy trapped on, in the lift up there somewhere. We believe he, he could be on about level 4. The police are up there, they've said level 4, but we're not sure. The man has been trapped in the building for an hour now. Sorry, hmm. Matt. Four flights of stairs is wishful thinking. How are we doing? The lift is actually stuck on level eight. Is the guy stuck in seven? No, uh, sorry. Oh, right, have you got... <coughs> is he all right in there and everything? Um, yeah, a bit, a bit stressed. Hello, mate, how are you? I'm Matt from the fire. Mate, wait me two seconds. You got some water and stuff in there, have you? Joe's dehydrated so you from a big night out, like and he's that? starting to panic. No problem, mate. Give us a little bit longer, and we'll have you out of there, no problem. He thinks he's running out of oxygen. What's that? Just, just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I Take some good breaths, everything will be all right, OK? So you want to relax? Concentrate on me, yeah. Just breathe normal, just everything will be all right, OK? So just take some good breaths, listen to Bullet, yeah. what he tells you to do. Your mum will get notified, everything will be OK, yeah, son. You don't know the no, 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 it's all right. Poor Barry wants his mum, but she recently relax. moved to a nursing home in Queensland relax. and his dad died a couple of yeah, months yeah, ago. Get it off your Mum's away in Queensland, so he's having a little bit of a, um, a sort of a hard time. How his mum's going to take what's happened to the house. Back inside the cottage, Rowie's extinguishing the last of the flames. 
So you've got to make sure you get any little hot, hot spots out. Any flame activity to be extinguished. The Fireys are also searching for Barry's pets. His two dogs and Budgie are still missing. The house is fairly well damaged by fire, but we've also got some other issues uh, with um, the storage of, of boxes and things that are inside the house, so that's making for really hard search and rescue. So at this point, the guys inside are doing it really hard. Relax, relax. <laughs> the Ambos are on their way. Hey. Barry's hoarding almost claimed his life. Mate, you just look at me for a sec. Yeah, he's going cold. Matey, look at, look at me. Keep your eyes open for a sec. Uh -huh. yeah, it yeah, might yeah. still. Gun is shot, yeah. Stay awake for me, okay? But, um, I want you to stay awake for um, okay? Barry is stay slipping awake. into shock. Oh. Bullet must keep him talking while police track down a relative. So whereabouts up in Queensland is she? Oh, you don't know? She's in a nursing home up there, is she? Yeah, well, we'll get in contact with her when you're better, OK? If you don't want to stress her out about you being sick... Barry's mum's interstate, but his nephew lives nearby. So they'll have a bit of trouble settling him down. Oh, OK, so just... So, if you, yeah, get the, get the nephew down, because he'll be able to settle him down. Yeah, no worries. Because no use, no use my bloke, she doesn't know anybody, all right? Yeah, yeah. And then, out of nowhere, another family member appears. It's Toby, and neighbours have turned up with Barry's other dog, Benji, and pet budgie, Joey. Yeah. I've got his um, nephew's number, so I'll ring him and ask him if he wants me to take the dog to the vet. And same with the bird. Yeah. The pets are in the far better condition the than their owner. The Ambos are treating Barry for shock and smoke inhalation. Barry! Then he spots a familiar face. Scott was raised with Barry, so they're more like brothers than uncle and nephew. <laughs> with Barry on his way to hospital, 27 can concentrate on the house. The fire was an accident, but there's still plenty of work to do. Meanwhile, Rescue 15 still trying to free their unhappy Joe. Hang on, don't worry, mate. You're not gonna... just, just hang on a couple of minutes, mate. Just bear with us. We'll get you out. Don't worry, mate. You're not going to stay in there. All right, champ. All right, buddy. All right. Fresh air and freedom. It's the perfect cure-all. There you go, eh? Not the best place to be stuck for an afternoon, is it? How long were you in there for? About an hour. About an hour, yeah. All Joe needs yeah, now is a quick kip in the hospital and he'll be as good as new. No worries, mate. <laughs> no problem. Hey, we've called for an ambulance and, and they've now loaded him. They're taking him to hospital and I'll just monitor him, keep an eye on him probably for the next 24 hours. Are we good? Um, it's not fire, it's just, um, the bird stuck in the shop. He can't okay. go out because no food, no water, and the bird is dying. It's been a busy shift for 27. First they were called to help Barry. Now they're responding to the call of nature. At this moment we've got a ferocious bird locked in the shop watching TV. It's an Indian miner that's in a major flap trapped inside a showroom. We'll put our Bronno up and see if we can get in through the top window. And if we can, we'll come down the stairs and release the poor thing. Since Garth's the rookie, he's assigned the job. The beak could be an issue. Uh, it doesn't look very happy in there. So, yeah, hopefully it wants to get out without too much encouragement. I'd say they've been renovating the front door. They've left it open, it's got in. And then they've just shut the door and gone over, you know. The plan is to open the doors and usher the bird out. See if you can open up, see if you can come downstairs and open up this front door. Don't worry about the alarm. If you get scared, just scream. We get bullet in there. It's deadlocked. Deadlock. Misguided minor one, Garth the Fiery, nil. Ask him if it's got Catch screws. It, and with 
that, Garth earns his wings. Back at station 15, Joel's impending arrival has inspired an office sweep, with all proceeds going to a baby present. She's due on the 15th? 15th. So what I was thinking was $10 in, mm -hmm. that gets you an hour and a day. What does the winner get? Yeah. Kudos. The winner has to get something. The winner gets to name... <laughs> whoa, no, whoa, name whoa, whoa! <laughs> hold on a minute. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> you get... uh, we should talk about this first before you third middle lay down and... Uh, third middle lane. Third middle lane. <laughs> no one ever uses. And, and the loser is the person who has to tell Rachel that. <laughs> so she's due on the 15th. Due on the 15th. So, and a little heads up, Jack, my little boy, he was nine days late. That's all the information I can give you. I'm going 15th. I'm the going day. the due date. I'm going the due date. On oh, my sister's wedding. Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> Midday. Nice. 12 noon. High noon. I'm, I'm going to say the 16th. Uh, and, you know, maybe, maybe 11 in the morning. What do you 14th. Think? Oh, Schmitty. Second child, it's going to be early. Can I change my time? No. Come on. On or off? You've got to give the station a call. Here and I'll probably tell you guys before the parents do. That's how much I love you guys. <laughs> we have a shop of light on the concourse of the train station. We'll make the second alarm at this point. We've just been informed of a... Um, Structure fire at Lincoln Railway Station. They made them a second alarm, so there's going to be um, pumps coming from different directions. When you're rushing to a fire, every second counts. Sometimes it's a challenge just getting there. crew from 62 arrive at the railway station to find a full-scale emergency underway. Fire is sweeping through a small railway news agency. With thousands of newspapers and magazines stacked inside, the place is a tinderbox. 62 needs to find out if the blaze has spread to neighbouring shops and businesses, and fast. There is still no, I'm sure that fire hasn't spread through the roof area. That will need to be checked with the thermal imaging camera in a moment. Just one wall separates the office from the news agency. There are no hot spots and no smoke. But they're only halfway in. The room is dark and the area confined. It's dangerous work. With so many crews at risk, Rescue 15 is called in as backup. They've stopped the trains in both directions. It's on the railway line, shop on the concourse level. Earlier, they saved a man from a lift. Now, they'll be looking after their own. Going as the rescue crew on this, we'll probably be tasked to do, um, for rapid intervention, I'd say. Please, I'll relay that message to Crew 62 is having trouble reaching the blaze, and every time they put out one spot fire, another flares in its place. If they don't get on top of the situation soon, the whole station could go up. Rescue 15 arrives at the train station to find four pumpers and dozens of firefighters on the scene. Meanwhile, crew 62 is through to that adjoining office. The fire hasn't spread, but next door, the news agency looks like a battle zone. There's no room to move, and there are loose electrical wires and pockets of fire everywhere. Appears to be uh, clip block steel in construction. The fire is so intense, it's melting the steel framework. It just won't stop burning. While 15 sets up emergency lighting, 62 attacks the flames from the rear. Oh, 
the fire must be contained before it does any more damage. Every few weeks, the boys from Station 88 take their truck off to a local school. How you going, kids? Good? Good. As you Saving you lives and preventing fires is far better than fighting them. So what you've got to do is get down really low, because down on the floor, there's nice, clean air. So we want to get down as low as we can. Yeah, come on, show me how you do it. That's it. Well done. Josh is going to show us this is what we wear in a fire. Josh kits up. Full of smoke. Now, that's look what we look like. We look a bit like Darth Vader in Star Wars, don't we? To a panicked hey. child, a fiery and full now. clubber can look pretty scary. This is a far better place for Josh to introduce himself. When we catch on fire, you don't run around like a crazy chicken. What do we do? What do we do first? That's right. We stop, we drop on the ground, and we roll. Today, the visit isn't interrupted by a call-out, so the kids are treated to the full tour. Who wants to go and look at the fire truck? Oh, well, let's go. Roll it up. That's where we put our breathing set on. Oh, that's the way. Oh. You want to hear the sirens? These photos were taken just days ago. For brothers Adam, John and Ross, tonight is heartbreaking. It took them years to build up the news agency and just hours to lose it. Shop fittings are twisted and charred, stock destroyed. And still, the fire keeps raging. Come back, come back, and have the talk. Look at this, come at the top. Just over the back here, too. The news agency blaze is finally under control. The fire's pretty much out. We're just going through to get the hot spots now. Got the guys from 27's Bronto up on the roof. Just with a tick camera, just uh, checking for hot spots, and uh, we're just cooling them as, as they call them. So they're telling us where to go, and we're just cooling hot spots. For two hours, fireys have given their best, while three brothers have lost their livelihoods. And it seems it was all the result of simple carelessness. After talking to the owner, it's been, uh, been closed for five hours. So uh, at the moment, I'm guessing a cigarette butt. It doesn't appear that there's been any breaking or entering at this stage, but I haven't had a real good chance to look at it. Rescue 15's no longer needed and can head back to base. But 62's still hard at it. Despite being the child of a firefighter, Joel's new baby wasn't in any great hurry to arrive. Baby girl. Baby girl. Hey. The mum and bub are doing well, and dad not too bad either. <laughs> um, what's, what's the weight? What's the birth weight? 3.58 kilos. Yeah, yeah we're going to get the time and date. Time and date. Go on, right up there. In the morning. So it was 5.07 a.m. on the 25th. All right, so you're on paternity leave? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, well done. Well done, mate. <laughs> well, uh, I'll speak to you, I think he wants to have a word. Good on you, mate, see ya. How are you, mate? Congratulations. That's all right. I'll tell you, Mrs. Keaton Cummins. Ten days over to you. I said 504 Have you got a name? Sway, isn't it? Sway, Sway Margaret Marie. And whatever Jock comes up with. <laughs> as winner of the sweep, Jock has chosen Matilda as Sway's third middle name. All right, mate, you take care. Mum's Keep yet to be list. convinced. Good stuff. Congratulations to Joel and Rachel on the latest addition to their family. suffer any serious injuries and was released from hospital the next day. 
his dogs are with the RSPCA, and his budgie is living with his nephew. Best of all, his mum isn't upset with him. Brothers Adam, John and Ross are hoping to set up a new business elsewhere. The fire was caused by that discarded cigarette butt, one of four and a half thousand fires that start that way every year. Now, search and rescue.